very warm welcome to this MTSS vlogcast series. I'm Lisa Collins, one of the co-founders of MTSS, and I'm delighted to be joined by Deep, Deep Cambay, who is the founder of Regenerating Business. Now today we're going to be taking a look at how purpose-led businesses um, look to attract the very best of talent. And talent is one of those skill shortages we, we have within the broadcast industry, so a topic close to most people's hearts. Deep, welcome. Thanks for being with us again today. Talk us through what a purpose-led business is. Great question. Um, purpose-led businesses. So it's a business who has a passion for a bigger aspirational goal than the transactional business and financial growth. So somebody who has built a brand or an organization that has built a brand and built a story and um, is really ambitious on wanting to make uh, a bigger impact, creating a legacy for future generations, whatever that may be. So it could be to do with um, looking after our planet. It could be, you know, something to do with innovating to create change in a way things have done or wanting to evolve people, look after people. It could be absolutely anything. And this, the, there is significant research out there that says that millennials and Gen Zs, those sorts of people are attracted by purpose-led organisations. Why is that? It's really interesting and I think, I think it's because as mainstream have, um, you know, acknowledged, you know, it is, it is understood, widely understood that, you know, our planet is a fragile place and um, we need to look after it in order for humankind to survive. You know, we can look at, at it in an apocalyptic way. You know, Gen Z, Gen X, you know, they've grown up with this understanding from a really early age. It's, you know, it's starting to be fed into educational channels. So they, you know, they are teaching us older ones, you know, and reflecting back at us going, you need to look after us because what about us in the future? And um, it's just been more grained and more normalised for them to think that way than what maybe the baby boomer generation, uh, my generation, I don't even know what generation I fit in. I always think I'm an in-betweener <laughs> between baby boomers and, uh, and Gen, Gen Z or Gen X or millennials even. Um, so, so I think that has had one aspect to it um, for sure. And those organisations without a clear purpose, what can they be doing to try and attract that younger group, uh, that next generation of talent? I think it's about communicating what's important to them. It's really bringing to life their brand, their values to life. You know, there has been a growing trend and this is why I find B Corp so fascinating. You know, there's more and more evidence out there. So when B Corp companies are recruiting talent, uh, there's a question that, go, you know, why did you, why did you apply to this company? And, you know, there's a high percentage of responses are saying it's because you're a B Corp, because it's understood that they're, are a purpose-led organization because they are using that framework. They, you know, environment and social impact is important to the business. It's demonstrating all of that with accountability all embedded into that whole process. You know, it's written in law that their stakeholders are important at the same level as their shareholders because that's a requirement of B Corp. And so I think that's where the evidence is starting to show going well you know we want something that is meaningful for us also another aspect with talent is you know they want to progress they want to grow within their roles they want to gain experience they want to be you know kind of interested in all different things um they want to know that their company cares about them 
They want to know that their company wants to invest in them, to develop them, to help them grow their skill set, help them move in lots of different directions wherever they want to go and progress in their career. Um, they want to know that they are included, you know, so, you know, we, we live in a globalized society, you know, the company needs to reflect their audience or their customer base. The customer base is much more diverse because we, you know, our world has become so small. Um, how are they reflecting that internally and how do they get the mindset and how do they understand different cultures from different people all over the world, from different economic backgrounds? They need to have that reflected inside of their audience to be able to reflect that back out externally as well. And when a youngster looks for a job, they, they, they do their research, don't they? You know, they, they're going onto the company's website, they're taking a look. What advice would you give to an organisation to ensure that they are attractive to new talent? I think it's about getting your employer brand right, you know, making sure you tell the stories that are meaningful for your people internally, understanding what is important to your employee is important. And I think it's about having conversations, uh, understanding them. And if you don't understand your employees or that, ta that pool that you're wanting to get, uh, you haven't got the right people in your business to begin with. So it's about, uh, yeah, it's about finding out, uh, talking to people, getting out there and making sure that you implement things in your business that are important to those people. And I guess having that sense of belonging is important. So would you recommend, you know, the faces of the business are shown on that website? Oh yes, I think transparency is really key. Um, you know, I've worked in businesses where, you know, I have been the only ethnic minority in a business, but I've never really felt it as, you know, oh my God, you know, it's not diverse enough. People have never really thought about it in the business. And I'm like, I didn't really think about it either because I've always felt a sense of belonging when I was in that business. So it was great. But I know of people who have not felt like that bit. They have not had the same opportunities, whether it be race, whether it be ability, disability, whether it be social economic background. These are all, or even neurodiversity, all of these things. So it's not just one or the other. It's thinking, you know, how do we bring all of those different aspects and how do we consider all of those aspects into our business, ways of thinking. Um, they want to feel a sense of belonging, yeah, absolutely, but commercially, it makes business sense because actually, the more you can bring in diversity into your organization and make and retain them, so you build that sense of belonging, the more you, ha you have a, this rich pool of perspectives, backgrounds, experiences to be able to innovate in your business, to be able to attract a larger customer base because you're understanding customers from more diverse backgrounds so you can communicate better externally if you're understanding people internally. I'm going to throw a really complicated question at you now. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> um, we've talked about companies and organisations, but I think it's fair to say as an industry, the broadcast media tech industry really struggles to attract the right talent. And there's some great initiatives out there where we're going into schools and universities to raise the awareness of the industry. But I guess for our industry to be more purpose-led, what do we as a collective need to do to attract the right talent? I think it's tapping into, you know, connecting the dots with your brand. Like if you, if you are a purpose-led brand, um, you can connect your story in line. And if you have aligned your purpose, your values, 
then your storytelling should be very, very easy to the talent that you want to attract. However, if you're not there, it's not the end of the world. You know, there are opportunities for leadership, for example, to do some stargazing. They can go and stargaze and look five, ten years ahead into the future. What do we want to stand for? Where, what do we want to throw our hat on? And start to explore what their purpose and ambition is, whether it still be the same as it is to the present day or whether they need to evolve it, change it expand it in some way there is an opportunity to do that and kind of you know facilitated workshops are great for that you know having someone facilitate your leadership team to help ask the right questions um, and get them to think in a specific way to maybe reshape what's already there um, to tell a stronger story yep a stronger story and going deeper and um, yeah, getting absolutely. that message out there. Deep, absolutely. thank you. And I'm sorry for the, the curveball question at the end. Thank, thank you so much. And that is the end of this episode. But do join us for our next, where we're going to be having a look a bit further at carbon. We look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.